Amazon package number 975. Oh dear, it appears we have some box damage. You can see right here in the corner, we have an opening. Well, that would never happen with the Postal Service. I can't imagine how that was done. Uh, we'll see. And as Eric said, it was damaged in shipment. And this cost, this came from a big box hardware store. It cost about $140, but I was not real happy with the shipping. Um, so hopefully it won't be damaged when we get inside. So here's some important instructions, which we'll be sure to read. Let's see how this looks. So far, so good. I think this helped. All right. out and keep the box in case I have to return it like some parts coming out of the packaging this looks like the top some dogs fighting nearby this sort of fell out of the packaging and shipment too heavy, I can lift it. So that's, that's not too bad. Which is good, because I'm going to be the main one using this. Alright, let's take a pause here and see what we have. I did notice when I got to the bottom of the box that the this part is kind of crushed. So, a little worried about what that might mean to the product, but we'll see. So, we got the parts out of the box. And good news, it looks like nothing was damaged. There are instructions in three languages, which is great, uh, English, Spanish, and French. There's a phone number to call if you need help, which is awesome. And not very many parts, so this looks like something I can do relatively easily. So Eric and I did a quick check of the first part of the video. You could not hear me over the cicadas outside. So I have a soft voice anyway, as you probably have noticed. The cicadas just drowned me out. Plus it was super hot outside as I tried to say earlier. It's a heat index of 101 just this morning. So we're back inside. The good news is we have air conditioning now. So this looks super simple. We started to look at the parts outside. This is not going to be a problem to put together. After I read through the instructions I feel like this is going to be a quick assembly. So the first thing that they tell us to do is to take off this, this nut and the washer on both ends of this wheel axle. All right, so I can easily do that in one of these spacers. So, super simple, I can do this. All right, and now we're gonna slide this through the stand, which is where the wheels are gonna to attach to the stand, which this is eventually gonna rest on. So I'm gonna slide it through both, both holes here. Hopefully it'll go right through. All right, super simple, and we're ready to go and get the wheels. So next we're going to put it on the wheels, the wheels onto the axle. So they, this is the wheel cover and this is the wheel. And this is just cosmetic as far as I can tell, but we'll, we'll put those on. So I'm going to slide the wheel onto the axle, real simple there, and um, then put a washer and a nut to hold it on. And I'm just going to hand tighten that for now. But they do provide a little hex screw 
and um, Allen wrench, which I think is for um, for the purpose of tightening and loosening those. So here's the other wheel, washer, and nut. Okay, and again, just hand tighten that. And now I'm going to take this stand and slide it into the bottom of the wood chipper, which is now upside down. Let's see if it goes in on the first try. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, the company provided this nice wrench that allowed us to tighten the nuts down a little bit more, so we've already done that off camera because my hand tightening wasn't wasn't quite good enough. So now they're flush, so that's awesome. And that was easy. Now we're gonna try and put these wheel covers on. They may not go in right off the bat. I gotta figure out how to line everything up. All right, we may have to work some more on that. We have a rubber mallet that's good for things like this. So we might try try that off camera so we don't waste your time. But So that's going to go in a little bit further. And we'll do that on both sides. Then the next thing is just to secure the uh, stand to the body of the wood chipper. And so they provided a screw and a washer to, to go in there. And there's a hole on both items that's lined up. So we may have to tighten that with a Phillips head. You can't see what I'm doing over here. All right, but we'll tighten that with the Phillips head off camera and we'll get these covers secured and we'll stand this thing up and we're getting really close to using it. So we got the wheel covers on. They turned out to be very straightforward once we lined up the swirls on the wheel with the swirls on the wheel cover and then it just clicked right into place. So don't use that rubber mallet that we talked about earlier because you might end up breaking something. This turned out to be just a situation of lining it all up correctly. One of the reasons we got a wood chipper is that we have tons of trees on our property and they're constantly dropping twigs and branches. And we have historically put these in the bin for the city to come and pick up and, and put into the landfill. But we thought this would be much greener for our planet a much better use of money instead of buying mulch and putting our twigs in the recycle bin uh, that we recycle our own twigs and make them into mulch and other in compost. So Eric's going to show you a quick pan of the kinds of trees that we have on our property. We're in a suburban area but we are blessed to have several large trees on our property. This wood chipper will take twigs and branches up to 1.57 inches, which seems very specific, and I don't always have a measuring tape handy, but here's an example of a branch that's less than one inch in diameter. So I think we're definitely safe with this one. So this model of the wood chipper does not come with any kind of container to catch the wood chips. So we found some old uh, shrubbery pots that we had that we could use to catch the wood chips. And just a, a little bit about safety. Uh, be sure to wear safety goggles because something could fly out of the wood chipper. So these were like $5 at the hardware store. You can wear your glasses or sunglasses as an alternative. Um, it comes with a paddle that helps you push the, these things down in there so you can keep your hands out of that at all times. This is a very potentially dangerous item, so be sure to keep children away from it and be very safe, um, safety prone, safety <laughs> focused on all of your wood chipping activities. As we feed each of the twigs and branches into the wood chipper, we may need to use this paddle to sort of push them in the last little bit and definitely got to keep your fingers away from all the moving parts. So you'll see us doing that. I won't be able to talk during the when the machine is running because it's very loud.
So how do we do? How did this machine do? So I like the wood chips. I'm pretty happy with that. They're small. Um, they went through pretty well. There's some bigger pieces, but for the most, you know, I think those are, none of those are too big. I think I'm pretty happy with that. What I was less happy with were <clears throat> some of the small twigs went through without being chopped up. So these will, I'll probably have to pull these out and not use them as is. And I tried to run some dry leaves through that were attached to branches and they didn't seem to break up very well at all. <clears throat> you can kind of see that here. So I would say do not plan to use this as a leaf mulcher at all. We've got some other tools that are good for leaf mulching and just know that you have to kind of go through it and pull out things that didn't get chopped up. But overall I would say this is what it is for $140. I got what I wanted. I don't have to make these manually. This is very time consuming to do manually so it's, it's a helpful tool but it's not going to do everything you need. Uh, but I would give it a thumbs up uh, overall.